up, everybody? So the ranger player is currently crying in a corner because the sorcerer and the druid players are making fun of him because his capstone gives him about an average of two damage a turn, and their capstones are just cooler and better than his in every way. In fact, every class's capstone is better than an average of two damage a turn. Um, the ranger's in therapy. It's Say it with me, everyone. Been a, it's been a time. Master of combat. Master of combat. <laughs> Master of combat. Oh my god, dude. Whoever wrote that, you're never going to live it down. No. I won't let you. <laughs> no. No, you are not. <laughs> Master of combat, baby. Two extra damage a turn on average. Let's go. Two whole dollary dues of damage. Hey, it could be 10 extra damage a turn. Could be. But it probably won't be. <laughs> I still think the craziest thing about that that the that fucking capstone is not even the fact that it's like the like least least interesting possible capstone you could do in the entire game. But the fact that the damage the fact that they gave you not flat damage or not a better damage curve with multiple dice. No no. Just step from a D6 to a D10. Like, you could have just given me two D6 at least. Like, I, that's the, I think that bugs me more than anything else. Well, so what bugs me is just that give it me has a better the potential average. to be... Yeah, what bugs uh, me is that it has the potential to be worse than the 2014 version, because at least then you got your wisdom mod, yeah. which is consistent. Yeah, which is a consistent flat damage, whereas, yeah, you could roll, you could roll a one on that D10. Which is like, dude. <laughs> oh my god! You know and what's weird to me is that they were like, "Well, we we stopped brutal critical from being a thing because sometimes the dice just fuck you." Yeah, but fuck ranger. <laughs> but fuck ranger, exactly. Yeah, yeah but fuck ranger. <laughs> that makes it even worse. Right. Once, oh say it with me, my god. wizards. You got me fucked up. <laughs> you got me fucked up on that one. I like. I'm not the kind of person. I've said this before, right? I always say when you go into a game fresh or you go into like a new version of a game, you should try and and, and uh, play everything as is just to see. This is one of those things I look at and I'm like, no, just homebrew this fucking capstone. Give him anything. Give him flat damage proficiency. Give him a wisdom flat damage. Give him 2d6. Give like <laughs> there's so many. Uh, there's so many easy. Fi give them something else on that capstone because Jesus fucking you know, Christ. I, so I was thinking about it. If you wanted the, the barest of bare minimums, you could be like, oh, th th this would suck, by the way. I would punch you if, if th like this was your first go to. Uh -huh. But like at the very least, you could do like, oh, the D10 increases by a number of like what level you cast Hunter's Mark just to make another thing dependent on Hunter's Mark. Mm, true. But at least you can max out at 5D10. Listen, you could you could make it master of combat. <laughs> You could make it you could make it go up with Hunter's Mark. You could make it flat damage. You could make it a D10 plus your wisdom modifier. You could make it your proficiency bonus. You could make it 2D6. You could make it 2D6 plus your damage modifier. You could make it two damage every attack. You could there's so many fucking things you could do. <laughs> there's so okay, many wait, things you I could do. <laughs> if we start doing merch, oh I want our God. first shirt to be Master of Master Combat. Of and it's just combat. a bow and arrow. That's but the arrow's got like a rectile dysfunction. <laughs> and it's and it's one D10. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Anyway, we're back. Hello. Isaiah's here. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> Ranger. Why? Anyway. 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 We're not talking about Ranger. I know we're I know we are beating the dead horse, and everyone else on the internet is beating the dead horse. So we shouldn't keep beating the dead horse. It's just really. I'm not mad. I'm disappointed. You know, the opportunity was there. You could have made something so much better. Anyway, uh, but uh, we're not talking about Rager this time around. It's time for Druid and Sorcerer, the last two of the classes that we have not talked about yet. And of whom I am uh, like 80% positive on, I think, something like that. How, how you feeling on that? Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty positive. There, there is some stuff with Druid that I'm not like 
a hundred percent vibing with, but considering that once a druid, much like Bard previously, was not even scratching my top five classes, and it still isn't to be fair, but it went from like number seven or eight to like number five, maybe number six. <laughs> okay, I mean, I disagree with this statement strongly, but that's okay. Uh, uh, Sorcerer has actually jumped up to into the top five. I know, which is very so, funny to me. Um, yeah. Well, it's, it's got to think about it this way. Uh, I lost. Fighter is no longer in my top five. <laughs> I. But fighter's better in every way than the old version. I just yes, but I just don't think it's as interesting as it could have been. Look, here's the thing. I, I have to contend with druid, rogue, cleric, right? And I mean, fucking barbarian. <laughs> oh, so you're saying all of which look fun as fuck. Oh, 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 so you're saying you're saying fighter went down because everybody else went up. Yes. Yeah, I guess I could see that argument. Yeah, yeah, because like fighter didn't get like did not get worse. It got better than 2014 version. 100 percent. No, but, yeah, but I get no, what you're right. saying. It, it you're didn't saying. get worse. It's just everything else got so much cooler. <laughs> Everyone else. And is I was cooler. like, I, I love fighter. I was a fighter diehard in 2014. Like. Up till now, I'm still like, fighters are awesome. It's just everything else is got stuff that fighter can do and kind of does it as cool. Yes, yes, I, I get what you're saying. Anyway. Okay, so. So, 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 Do you know what Ranger is? Very, very low. It's last. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Before we get into it, though, please... Take a moment, say a little prayer prayer to Lathander, praise be Mistra, and hit the follow or subscribe button. Peace and thank you. All right. So before we actually get into Druid and, and, and Sorcerer, though, I, I need to make a clarification on something because I misunderstood. And I think, Isaiah, you were also in this camp of mis- misunderstanding. And I think probably a lot of the Internet is. I have not heard discussion of this online uh but upon doing some research and consulting the necronomicon uh i realized that we sort of misunderstood the new casting or not the new casting rules but the whole like so remember how before i was like oh uh, everyone's a prepared caster now yes okay so they're like not though (laughs) Hmm. they're not actually known casters are still a thing they just worded it differently. And the reason, the reason I, f- I found this out because I was confused because I heard some discussion online about how magical secrets worked and the way people were talking about it. I was like, wait, that's not like the under the way people are describing it was not my understanding of the ability, uh, but it's because I was misunderstanding how the actual spell casting rules work. So. Spells known casters are not actually gone from the game. They said, you know, the phrasing is that, oh, nobody's a known caster anymore, like Sorcerer and Bard. That's not actually true. They instead change the wording on the caster classes. So every click, every. Oh, I don't know what my tongue just did the thing there. That was interesting. (laughs) <laughs> they changed the wording so that every caster class uses similar language to describe how preparing spells works. So every entry uses the word, like uses the words prepared spells, but they don't all work like prepared spells that 2014 5e players think they do. So wizard and cleric change their prepared spells on a long rest, as they did before. But Bard and Sorcerer, for example, can now change one of their quote-unquote prepared spells on every class level up. So they still are effectively known casters. It's just described a little bit differently, and they have a little bit more flexibility in how it works. So when you're a Bard, you pick your spells, you prepare them, quote-unquote, You have them. You cannot change them until you level, take another level in Bard. So you are still effectively a known caster. 
The difference is in 2014, you had your known spells and you were locked in. 2024, every level that you take in Bard, you can swap one of the ones out if you didn't like it or don't use it or whatever. But mechanically, from a session to session basis, you work the same as you did before. You have a list of spells. You cast your list of spells. That's it. A bard cannot sit down and change their prepared list every long rest like a wizard or a cleric could or a druid, for example. See, what this means for magical secrets is it's actually not that different from how it works before. And it's not as crazy as we initially thought it was. So what this means is it's fairly similar to its older version of the ability, except that you can freely choose one new prepared spell from the Bard, Cleric, Druid, or Wizard list every time you level up, rather than two spells that are locked in when you get the Magical Secrets ability. What that ends up meaning is, so the way it worked before, is the levels that you got the Magical Secrets feature and additional Magical Secrets was you pick two spells and those were locked in. So you got it at level 10 or whatever. I forget exactly what the level progression was, but let's say 10 and 14. I don't think that's right, but whatever. You got it at 10, you pick two spells. Those are stuck there forever. You get it at 14, you pick two spells. Those are stuck there forever. The way the new Magical Secrets works is every time you level up, you can swap out a spell because you have magical secrets, those spells that you can swap could be Bard, Cleric, Druid, or Wizard. That makes sense? Yes. So it's not as crazy as we thought it is. Essentially, all it means is you can swap out one spell from those other classes when you level. So you're just picking... You do still have to look at all those spell lists, but you don't need to look at them like every long rest, for example. You just swap them out on level ups. So it's not as crazy as we thought it was and is not actually that different from how it used to work. My only thing with that Uh is I would prefer if if, if it's like you're a known caster, but you can just swap one spell a day. You can't like one spell a a caster, right? You can come a day. Is that what you said? One spell a day. Yeah, well, so like, because think about it this way, right? With other prepared casters, you can completely redo your spell list yes. once a day if you need to. Yes. Uh, I think the level up thing is a little too restrictive still. Because that could be days to weeks and it's like, the, well, you can just talk to your DM. It's like, yes, you could. Well, but you could also codify something that makes it so I don't have to. I think the reason um, that they did on level ups is because um, the like you can spot slot swap one a day thing is like kind of a wizard thing so it's sort of like we don't want to step on wizard toes i think but but the bard's whole thing is stepping on toes it tab dances on toes i mean it spells from everyone (laughs) that's true (laughs) but like the wizard has that thing where they can swap a spell on a short rest for example so i think they don't want to like cross over but i do see what you're saying um it, it it reads a little weird right now but i honestly the only reason i think it reads weird is because we've been playing with 2014 for literally 10 years and so we're used to the difference between known casters and prepared casters right like that has been established in our brain so now that we see the prepared language on every class it feels a little weird but i think we'll probably get used to it it won't be that big a deal eventually yeah but it was like everything you'll just get used to it i did have to reread the rules in Bard like three times before I could make sense of it. And then I read the rules in Wizard and Cleric and I was like, okay, now I see what the difference is. So it did take me a minute, but I think if you're a new player coming in, it probably won't be as confusing because you won't have you won't have that like previous lexicon to throw you off. Mm -hmm. Um, For those who are curious, uh, the spell casting for the classes, the classes that can change one prepared spell on a level up are Bard, Arcane Trickster Rogue, Eldritch Knight Sorcerer, sorry, Eldritch Knight Fighter, Sorcerer, and Warlock. They get to change their spells on a level up. The classes that can change it on a long rest are Cleric, Druid, Wizard, although Wizard is still limited by their spell book. And funny enough, and Isaiah, this is actually what you were talking about. Paladin and Ranger can change one spell on a long rest. 
Ah, there it is. Yep. Paladin and Ranger got that. So they didn't want to necessarily give that to everybody, but I, it's funny. I completely forgot I wrote this down. So disregard what I was saying before. But yeah, they didn't want to give it to everybody, but they did give it to Paladin and Ranger. So, yeah. Hmm. Thought that was, yeah, I don't know. I thought that was interesting because before they couldn't do that at all. So interesting. Um, Wizard is still limited by their spell book. So they still have that kind of, uh, you know, awkwardness, I guess, is the only way to put it. But yeah, I just wanted to point that out because I we were talking up magical secrets and everything, and we uh, grossly misunderstood how it works. We did, yes. Uh, so it's not as crazy as we thought it was. Does that mean Bard is slightly easier to play? Slightly, slightly. Still a very difficult class to play, I would say. Still probably one of the most difficult. Yeah, I mean, it's it's always been one of the most tech heavy because it's yeah. the most reliant on a lot of things. Yeah. All right. So. Let's what talk. do you think is the uh, most? Sorry. What do you think is the most tech heavy class? Without talking about Artificer, because Artificer just wins by default. Who's the most... Oh, who's, like, the most complicated class to play? I think it's Wizard, personally. I don't know. It might be Bard. You think so? It feels like it might be. I'd have to think about it. But Wizard's up there, too. Actually, no. I'm going to say Druid, actually. I'm going to say it's Druid. Oh, yeah, because you do have to you have to contend with Wild Shape. Wild shape. Your spellcasting works with Wild yes, Shape. Yeah. yeah, that's fair. And a lot of players find that to be very uh, unintuitive, I guess is the only way I could put it. And sort of, I think a lot of players look, especially because when you look at Wild Shape in the book, it's a fucking, it's a wall of text. So people look at that wall of text and go, I ain't going to read that, you know? <laughs> Yeah. So I think Druid that being said, becomes. We'll yeah. be talking about that soon because they, yes. they they had some decisions that they made with spell casting in terms of wild shape. That's one of the things where I'm like, eh. Yes, we'll get there. So, Druid. All right, let's talk about Druid. Um. So base Druid. Um. The the first big notable thing is that at level one. They now get a feature called Primal Order, where they can choose between a magician or a warden. Um, and this is basically the same choice that the cleric makes, where it's, do you want to be the melee druid or do you want to be the casty druid? Magician gives you, like, extra cantrips and adds your wisdom modifier to some checks. Warden gives you uh, martial weapon proficiency and medium armor. So... A little bit of a choice there at level one. And then also you, of course, still get the druidic ability. But they did add the little thing where druidic uh, gives you the speak with animals spell always prepared. And my immediate response to that is, ah, we once again did the thing where we gave a spell as a class feature. Yep. Thanks. Why can't I just talk? I why can't druidic just say you could talk to animals? End of discussion. Done. I was going to say, yeah, I, I just let I me talk to the animals. They were like. So stupid. Actually, so something I wanted to bring up with with speak with animals is and I'm sure you've had to deal with this, too, because I've had to deal with this where. Speak with animals is one of the most uh, situationally useful, depending on DM spells in the game. Yes. Despite the fact that at this point in the year of our Lord, 2024, we have numerous examples of what that spell actually does when it comes to how animals understand and respond to you. I mean, Baldur's but Gate. Like so many times where people just roll animals to be like brain dead. Yes. And you're like, well, this yes. is useless. I mean, if you want to see a good way to utilize speak with animals, look up how it works in Baldur's Gate and how the animals communicate information with you. They're not useless, but they are limited in their understanding of things. They have very simple thoughts, but they can convey information to you. Like, they're not fucking useless. If you want an excellent... They also don't understand the greater world around them, right? So you want a really great example, and I'm not going to spoil it for you, Isaiah, so I won't describe it, but 
There's a pigeon you can talk to in Act Three. Who is a he's a he's a carrier pigeon that carries letters. Go talk to that pigeon with the speak with animals buff on you because uh, he has some he has some lovely insights, but he very clearly doesn't understand the world very well because uh, he thinks cats are basically demons. As one small example, so like shit like that, where it's like yes, the the animals do not comprehend the world in the same way, but they're not fucking like. They're not trees. You know? So, yes, I agree with you. Speak oh, that's with animals, another spell that definitely. people make useless. Speak with plants. Speak with that's plants. That's another one where you're yes. just like, oh, great. Yeah. Um, well, so in, in Act 1, the squirrel that you talk to that's like, you're underneath my fucking tree. Oh, like, yeah. Buddy, I'm just I'm just passing through. Like, yes. You had a passing to get these fucking hands, buddy. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Brother. <laughs> but it even helps you. It's like, oh, yeah, you know, the, the, the stupid horn people put something in my tree take that shit out of my tree and you yeah. can have it you're like well so that's a great example right gotcha. is he calls tieflings the horn people because he doesn't know what the fuck a tiefling is and he doesn't have a word for it but he knows that there's people walking around with big horns on their head so he describes that like that's a good good example of how it should work right and he's not gonna he can't tell you oh this specific guy did x y or z but he could like describe it a little bit or be like some weirdo did this thing around my nest you know again they have limited understanding of their world but they're not fucking clueless <laughs> i mean jesus I christ anger that one is it's like if you touch that <laughs> fucking tree <laughs> like buddy i mean shit. you're a squirrel <laughs> i mean yeah what are you gonna do bud <laughs> but even like if you look at i mean shit animals in real life right like your dog doesn't understand that like you know, you have a job and go to work, but your dog does understand that you disappear in the middle of the day at the same time every day, and then you come back at the same time every day, and he knows that that's part of what you do, and that's what's supposed to happen. So he can't describe that you're going to work, but he can describe that, like, well, my human disappears at this time and then comes home at this time, and then they feed me and let me out, right? Like, <laughs> I don't know. Yes, I agree. I get annoyed with the speak with animals thing, too. <laughs> anyway. Moving on, though. <laughs> so let's talk about wild shape. Sorry, I need a little, yeah. need a little, need a little liquid. Um, so wild shape got quite a lot of changes. Yeah. So, yeah. So first and foremost, uh, all wild shapes are now a bonus action. Uh, which initially felt a little weird for me but i understand it because they're trying to avoid that thing you do where you have a turn where you prepare you're preparing for something but then do nothing those those kinds of turns because those do suck so sure yeah so all wild shapes are a bonus action not just moon druid uh now you used to have two uses of wild shape and then you would have unlimited uses at level 20 and there was like no in between at all uh, now you get two uses, then three uses, then four uses. They took away the unlimited uses, which we'll get to later, but I'm not happy about it. Um, before, Wild Shape, you'd get all your uses back on a short or long rest. Now, you get one back on a short rest, all of them back on a long rest. You get an ability... Oh, excuse me. You get an ability at level 5 called Wild Resurgence to restore a use of Wild Shape with a spell slot. And then at level 20, you can get one use back. We'll get to that later. This is the big one. Before, when you transformed into your Wild Shape, you took all of the hit points of the beast you turned into. Now, you keep your HP and you get temporary hit points equal to uh for regular druids equal to your uh druid level uh yes so that's our that's our that's the big change people have been complaining about is uh druid no longer gets an entirely new fresh bag of hit points every time you wild shape you get temporary hit points on top of your normal hp and as a non-moon druid, you get temporary hit points equal to your druid level, which is not a ton. But no, that is it's in fact kind of dog shit, actually. It's a little low, but I would like to point out 
something that's really important is you can't be knocked out of your wild shape from taking damage anymore. So it's not like, you know, you lose those 10 hit points and you revert to human form or you go at half, you know, or you get to half HP and you revert. Like you literally cannot be knocked out of your wild shape unless you're, I think it's incapacitated, dead or unconscious or you turn it off yourself, obviously. Uh, so, yes, you lose out on the hit point tank thing, but you can be an animal as long as you want. I mean, I I understand the change. I am not too bothered by it as someone who has to be, someone who is often on the DM side of the table. I get it. I mean, I really like druids, so I'm sad on one hand, but I understand it on the other hand. Um, and quite frankly, unless you're a moon druid, most people aren't wild shaping for, for fighting purposes very much anyway. And the moon druid gets quite a quite a bit more of that temporary HP. So I don't think it's too bad, personally. I don't know about you. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I'm not in love with it. because. So the thing that confused me, right, is that you can't do it infinitely anymore. You can't wild shape infinitely. Yep. But you also don't get the crazy hit points. And I figured you, the reason why you would take away the infinite casts is because at level 20, like the, the joke is that druids have infinite HP and they kind of do, right? They do, like, yes. You can turn into like a T-Rex over and over again. Basically every turn and huh? Over and over again, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Infinitely and have just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hit points. Yes. So you're like, okay, we'll just limit how many times they can transform, even at the highest level. Alright. But then you can't get the hit points, so you're like, wait. But now they can't really tank at all well, unless here's you're the a thing. Moon druid. You could still sort of kind of have infinite hit points because you could just keep keep re-upping the temporary hit points it's not quite as good obviously because the temporary hit points will be easier to chew through but you still can keep you could keep re-upping the temporary hit points which is why the main reason they got rid of the infinite thing i think i just i mean look you gotta admit wild shape was too strong before so they had to figure out some kind of way to narrow down that ridiculous tank buffing nonsense they could do you know I did actually. I thought about this. Mm-hmm. Okay. So as it, I, I, there's no article for this, and I did not consult the Necronomicon, so you can feel free to correct me. But there is no uh, spell slot cap you have to meet to re up your wild shape, right? Well, how do you mean? So I'm assuming you just start from level one spell slots. You just, you just eat them up. Or is it highest spell slots or whatever? Are you talking about for the wild resurgence ability? Yeah. No, it is capped. Uh, so once on each of your turns, if you have no wild shapes, you can give yourself one use by expending a spell slot. But it's any spell slot. Uh, Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you could very easily make it so that rather than just having... Like, it's like, oh, you, you, when you cast Wild Shape, if you don't have any left, what you burn a spell slot equal to the challenge rating of the creature. And I believe in normal Druid, you max out at challenge rating five. So you can't go past challenge rating five. And you can only do that three times. And then you can't be a T Rex anymore, but you could be like, uh, wait, are you talking about uh, Grizzly Bear? Non Moon Druid? Non Moon Druid maxes out at CR1. Oh, yeah, then what the fuck? What are you, what, which part are you, what the fuck? Hmm. Wait, which part are you questioning? Well, n- now I feel like there's even less reason to not, because, like, hold on, I'm gonna check the best area real quick and see. So, <sighs> what's the highest HP? beast you can be i mean look it doesn't even really matter like the hp was just strong either way you know like it was just good (laughs) 
So like it was, it was good. Don't get me wrong. It was very good. I think it was just too much. You know, I honestly, I think they were my, my thing is, I think they were maybe just a little too restrictive with the temporary HP. They could have been like a little more lenient, maybe, maybe two times your druid level. But I think the temporary HP thing is, is a pretty good, like half measure. You know what I mean? Like it's a good compromise. I feel like. Yeah, it's, it's not, it's not a bad one. I'll give you that. It, it, you know, it, it's like the paladin, like, let's put it this way. Paladin smite. It was like, okay, paladin smite needed to be compromised on. Okay. They went too overboard with paladin smite and, and compromised too much. Wild shapes on druids. I feel like they compromised better. You know, you know what I mean? Yes. Uh, another thing with the beast forms. Huh, so this is one of those ones that's just a li- honestly is literally just a limitation for newer players. If you're an old player and you know what you're doing, I feel like it's fine to just ignore this new rule. Uh, but the new rule is you choose a number of forms, you know, and then when you finish a long rest, you can replace those forms. And as you level up, you get to learn more. So at level f- two, you know four forms. At level six, no, sorry, level four, you know six forms. And at level eight, you know, or, god damn it. At, or no, yeah, at level eight, you know eight forms. So it's like you could turn into four animals, six animals, and then eight animals. And again, I really think the only reason they put this rule in there is just to try and narrow down the options for newer players. So like, if you're an old school player, just be like, hey, DM, can I just ignore that little bit there? Because I don't we don't need that, you know? Yeah, I mean, so one thing I actually I, I saw some people complaining about this, and I think you're wrong fundamentally, is uh, people were I saw some people upset that you go back to animals rather than the archetype. Yeah, no, I don't like the archetype. And I mean, no, I, I don't either. I don't either. It, like. It took all of the fun out of being like looking through the beast. Oh, I want to be a thing. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Um, I don't know. My, so my thing has always been, and again, I, I did not consult, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't like that. It's like, you can't be a thing that flies until level five. That is still there. Yes. That's so dorky. I like also that being said, I think it's so level, dumb that level eight, by the way. Yeah. Level eight, even stupider. Level eight for for base druid. Level five is a third level spell. I'm oh, sorry, fly is a third level spell. That's level it five. Is. Yes. Why the fuck? It's just dumb. I like. That's always that's one of the things that's always killed me about wild shape is that it's like what. But I want to be a bird. Well, you're not level eight. It's like, but yes. But I want to be a bird. You know what I mean? Yes, I, that is one of those ones I've always found. Yeah, a little strange. Um, you will be happy to hear, though, Circle of the Moon Druid does not have that problem. Hmm? Huh? It will get there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, where was I? Do, do, do. Um, oh, also, you can now talk in your beast form. Yes. Yes, you can. Which... I, under- I, I, I understand. I get it. But also, I feel like it's very funny when you try to communicate with your druid as a bear and they just have to growl at you. I just think that's funny. So I'm a little sad to see. Uh, it go, I, will, I, I won't disagree. It. it is funny. It's yes. Uh, <laughs> I get it. But I am. I yeah, I'm like, mm. I get it. But it's, it amuses me. It amuses me in a special kind of way. You know, <laughs> I don't know. Look, I mean, the the funniest part, one of the funniest parts about Keyleth as a character from campaign one is every time she's an Earth Elemental and they're like, yeah, yeah. what's wrong, Kiki? It's little Timmy dropped in the well. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> she's like, fuck you. <laughs> she just makes rock noises. That's what I'm saying. It's just, that shit's hilarious. Um, You still cannot uh, spell cast in wild shape, uh, but you can cast a concentration spell and then transform, of course. Uh, and, you know, the usual, like, you can't interact with things uh, that, you know, if you're a bear, you can't pick up a spoon, you know, that type of shit. 
Um, I would just always be a raccoon because raccoons have opposable thumbs. That's very true. Uh, and then we have the wild companion, which is a spell that was, or an ability that was in Tasha's. You can burn a use of your wild shape uh, to cast the fine familiar spell without material components. Uh, also, the the familiar is considered fey and uh, disappears when you finish a short long rest. Which I mean, fine, I guess. It's fine. I don't know. Not the most exciting thing, but it does the job. You know. Um, level three and four, obviously, we don't need to talk about. Level five is when you get the wild resurgence ability. This is basically the thing that sorcerer can do where you can convert spell points to spell slots and vice versa. That's basically what wild resurgence does. It is a little more limited though. Um, you can expend a use of wild shape to give yourself a level one spell slot, but you can only do that once per long rest. It's a little more limited, um, but it is another thing. If you're somebody like Isaiah and you don't want to turn into animals, it is another thing to utilize your wild shape charges on. Or, for example, if you're playing a land druid and you want more spells, it's another thing you could utilize. More spells. Yes. So base druid, you can use wild companion and you can convert spell slots for your wild shapes. Uh, You can also. Oh, no, that's later. Um, So two solid uses for that. Level seven, you get elemental fury. Uh, which is another one of these choice things where you can choose to be caster focused or physical focused, basically. Um, you get the potent spell casting, which does the same thing as the cleric one. It adds your modifier to your cantrips. Or you can do the primal strike, which adds a D8 of cold fire, lightning, or thunder damage to your beast form attacks. So uh, the druid gets an extra D8. The ranger goes from a d6 to a d10. Yeah, buddy. And the druid gets that at level 7. And the ranger gets it at level 20. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. <clears throat> at level what do you think about it, the anger it makes you, doesn't it? Uh, absolutely. Uh, oh, wait. Here's another one, though. At level 15, you get improved elemental fury. Which, uh... Lamau, they used improved again. 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 <laughs> did you see I put my... Uh, oh, did I not? Did I delete my... No- oh, I made a little joke in there for you, and I think I deleted it, not realizing. <laughs> but yeah, yes. no, it's not in there, bud. Damn it. Uh, yes, improved elemental fury. Lamau. Lamau. Um, uh, improved elemental fury. When you cast a druid cantrip, uh, the spell's range increases by 300 feet. Okay. <laughs> that was um, pretty wild. The reason they did this, Jeremy Crawford said specifically in the video, was so if you're like an eagle or whatever, you could cast a cantrip while you're 300 feet in the air flying around. Um, it is a little funny if you that. You take a couple levels in Warlock, you're just fucking <laughs> air raiding people with Eldritch Blast. Well, so the thing that's funny is you get that ability at level 15, but you don't get beast spells until level 18. So oh. you have to wait a little bit there. Um, or you can get primal strikes where you do an extra 2d8 damage at level 15. <laughs> Ranger gets a d10 at level 20, by the way. Just one, one d10. And it's not extra. Master of combat. It's not extra. The d6 turns into a d10. Master of combat. Master of combat. Anyway, level 18, you get beast spells. While using your wild shape, you can cast spells in your beast form, except for any spells that have material components with a cost or that consume its material components. And then Druid gets their new Arch Druid ability. I kind of hate it. I'm going to be honest. Oh? (laughs) It's like a nerf, but not a nerf. Nah. So... Instead of infinite wild shapes, which, as we just addressed, is sort of, you know, not great. Um, Whenever you roll initiative, if you have no wild shapes, you regain one expended use of your wild shapes. So you get it, you know, you get one, Um, which granted, you only really need one per fight now that you can't get knocked out of the wild shape necessarily unless you're downed all the way. So that's good. Um, 
And then you get Nature's Magician. You can convert uses of your wild shape into spell slots. Choose a number of unexpended wild shapes and convert them into a single spell slot, which each use convert contributing two levels. For example, if you use two uses of wild shape, you can produce a fourth level. You can produce a level four spell slot. Uh, once you use this benefit, you can't do so again until you finish a long rest. I don't know why that has a long rest once per long rest limitation on it. That feels kind of meh, but whatever, I guess. That feels I'm just thinking about how Monk has basically infinite key points. Kinda, yeah. No, key points, fuck it. I don't care. <laughs> yes, they have infinite They're focus basically points. infinite key points now, and they, they're putting weird hard limits on Wild Shape when it yes. is just less effective than it used to be. Well, they're not putting limits on Wild Shape, but they're putting limits on, like, how much you can use. Yes, and then you still have the thing where you age more slowly, but obviously that's like a flame thing. That's not really a mechanical thing. Um, See, th that aging one is one of the coolest like ribbon abilities. Yeah, it's a fun yeah, ribbon. It's not enough to like. It's a fun ribbon. Uh, Archdruid, before you used to ignore verbal and somatic components of your druid spells, as well as any material components that lack a cost or aren't consumed by the spell. That's fucking sick. I don't know why they took that bit away. I'm really sad about that because that means like. You could just cast spells with your fucking brain, basically. Like, you didn't need to... You just thought about it, and the spell went off. That's fucking sick. So little, I, I always sad. thought about it as... Because you are a master of, like, the Earth, basically. The Earth just, is doing it for you. <laughs> it's like, there's diamonds somewhere in the planet that are being burned for this reincarnate. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you're just using the Earth as your material component. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm a little sad about the new Archer ability. I, I think... Once again, homebrew that bitch back in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, well, I would do kind of a combination thing because I, it's true the infinite wild shapes is kind of a problem. And I don't even hate the nature's magician of like turning wild shapes into spell slots because again, if you're not playing a moon druid, I understand again, another usage of wild shapes for not transforming. So I'm okay with that. But yeah, I missed that one bit of, you know, convert uh, of ignoring components. Hmm. Uh, so it's sort of like a weird side grade situation. It's, you know, but I mean, base druid, I'm pretty happy with. I already like the class. I, I mean, I shouldn't say that. I love the concept of druids as just like a fantasy premise. Uh, I've always had frustrations with the class and some of the, a lot of those frustrations are still there, but I think this is overall better. You know, you know, mm -hmm. you know. So, a quick fun thing, right? Okay. Uh, Circle of Stars Druid, yeah. or the Moon Druid? Which one? Which one makes you like a more? Uh, one that gives you like the space spells. Stars. Is it star? Yeah, yeah. So that one is kind of the the Fire Emblem Druid. Because, like, in Fire Emblem, like, it's even though they're, like, dark wizards, dark is not, like, evil. Dark is, like, the blackness of space, which is why their first spell is called Gravity. Um, uh, you know, stars isn't new, right? No, I know, it's Tasha's, but, like, yeah. they, they've, like, added more spells. No, they that, didn't. Like, are more space-themed. No, they didn't. Yeah, they did. No. Stars. They added the new cantrip. That's, like, a weird, like, oh, shoot oh, a little oh, shooting oh, star. Oh, the game itself got more spells. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, okay. I see what you're saying. All right. They've got more, like, space stuff in there now, so... Yeah, a little bit more. You could kind of just make a fucking Fire Emblem Druid if you wanted to. Well, you have fun with that, bud. I will. Okay. That's good. That's good. Uh, however, let's talk about Moon Druid, which is a combination of... Yay and also aw. <laughs> so... Yeah, I'm pretty sure we have the same aw. Probably. So circle forms now, right? So uh, Moon Druid used to get, what was it called? Uh, improved. So, was it called? Hold on. Wait, was it called improved? Combat Wild Shapes. It was called Combat Wild Shapes. Uh, and they got circle forms. So now Combat Wild Shapes and circle forms is kind of smushed together into one thing. It's called circle forms. The maximum challenge rating of the form uh, for the form what wait what the maximum for the forms equal okay that's worded weirdly but you can turn into something that is your druid level divided by three no restriction on flying okay, wait, that's kind of sick no that's, restriction that's on cool. swimming 
your druid so at so you can max out at 17th level i don't actually think there are any beasts that go that high well so wait 13th no. they max out at 13th level what 20 divided by three huh oh divided by my bad but what math were you oh, that's just... weird that's like uh, minus oh no yeah 20 divided by three you max out at cr6 so one whole CR than it more than it used to be. Okay. No. Same. I believe it. I thought it maxed out at five previously. No, nope, maxed out at six. At six. That that part right. is the same. Well, the coolest thing you can be there is a Ceradon. That actually does look pretty cool. Uh. Space whale. Gabali. Gabahali. Gabahali. Gibaha. Whatever. Uh -huh. Greater Death Butterfly Swarm. That's pretty cool, actually. <laughs> uh, the Kongamato, a Mammoth, a Terastodon, and ooh, the Lake Worm. What's that from? Oh, Humblewood. Okay, so you can kind of be a Leviathan. That's pretty cool. Size huge. 136 fucking hit points, but it doesn't matter anymore. Uh, it does not. Be a Mammoth. You could be a mammoth. Anyway, point being, yes, it already went. It, the The calculation on the challenge rating was the same. The important thing is they have no restriction on flying or swimming anymore. Which I feel mm. like you didn't hear me say. <laughs> I I did. I, that's I, your, was, I was kind of wrapped up on how, how cool your thing could be. That's your, um, main, that's your main complaint. It, it, it's gone. it is. It is my main complaint. I'm just really mad that it's only Moon Druid. Fair enough. It just feels like such a quintessential thing to like not have to wait till damn near halfway through the game to turn into a bird. Like and, and the thing that's got me fucked up about this, I'm I'm just gonna go off on a faff real quick. Uh-huh. You can conjure familiars of which you can share their perspectives. So you effectively have a fly speed anyway. And you can cast fly at fifth level. Well, so why Druid, the fuck Druid would you can't make cast it? Fly. They can't cast flat. That's even dumber. At least I don't. The idea that it's like familiars give lets you basically fly anyway with their perspective shift thing. Why can't you be a bird before level eight? I, I have not seen a solid argument for it ever. A solid one. I've seen arguments, but I've, I've always thought they were just dog shit arguments. Um, you know, I don't really know 100% what their logic is. I suppose it's something along the lines of we don't, you know, if the druid can just turn into whatever they want and do all the scouting, then like, what do we have a rogue for or whatever, I guess is the argument. Inside versus outside. I mean, sure. Yeah. I would agree. But then that. you, but you could make the same argument for a wizard having to a, certain, a familiar to a certain degree. Yes. I don't know. I don't really know. I don't. I, I'm just listen. I, I, I know. It's, I know. It sounds like I'm interrogating you. I'm just miffed. no. I get it's just I get stupid. Saying, yes, you're saying you should be able to turn into a fucking like parakeet or something like that. Like not, yeah. not necessarily a giant eagle, but you should be able to turn into a blue jay and like sit in the farmer's yard and like watch the watch what's going on or whatever. Exactly. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Um. Well, if you're a moon druid, you can now. Uh. This is a really nice touch that Moon Druid got. So now, uh, the way it worked before, of course, was you assume the beast form and you get the AC of the beast. Now, if you're a Moon Druid, you get a base AC that is 13 plus your wisdom modifier. If that total is higher, you take that. If the beast AC is higher, you take the beast AC. You just have a better baseline. Basically, you could turn into a rat with like 16 AC. You know? Very funny. <laughs> And then for the temporary hit points, Moon Druid gets uh, temporary hit points equal to three times your Druid level. So quite a bit more than regular Druid. Uh, the other fun thing they added with, uh, with Moon Druid is you now have your Circle of the Moon spells, so you get extra spells. Uh, similar to, you know, extra spells from being like a warlock or a sorcerer or stuff like that. Um, you get Cure Wounds, Moonbeam, Starry Wisp, Conjure Animals, Font of Moonlight, and Mass Cure Wounds. And you can cast those in your beast shape, which other druids can't do until level 18. You can do it at level 3. 
Um, the way that this ability, what this used to be, was the Moon Druid could just heal themselves uh, as a bonus action. Uh, now you can just cast Cure Wounds on yourself as well as a bunch of other spells. So, yeah. 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 Pretty fun. Okay. Pretty fun. Oh, this was the one that I was laughing about. Improved Wild Shape. Fucking. Im- or sorry, improved circle forms. Improved circle forms. They're doing this to me on purpose. They are doing this to you purpose. This is a targeted. Uh, so this is actually kind of similar to the way it worked before. Um, before you used to have primal strikes, which was just your abilities count as magical. But since we've removed that language... Now, uh, your abilities count as rate. You can deal radiant damage in your wild shape form, but also you can add your wisdom modifier to con saves. So you're just you're you're a little bit tougher uh, as a moon druid in animal form. Just like okay, cool. And then we get into the the other two abilities, which are a little strange. So you get moonlight step at level ten, which lets you teleport as a bonus action and you get advantage on your next attack after teleporting I literally just put in my notes uh okay I don't why is this a thing moon druid can do (laughs) it's so it's a good question it is so like it's not a bad ability necessarily but thematically it's like what are we I don't, it's very off brand. It just doesn't feel correct well, at so all. Why? Now, uh-huh. I, I think the funnier question you can ask is, yep. why is this what they can do rather than turning into LM? Uh, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm a different one. No, 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 yeah. no you're right. right well, why, why is this what they can do rather than turning rather into than elementals? Turn into elementals. At least with elementals, you fucking turn into something. Yeah. This yeah. is just you become weird solar monk for a little bit. Like. Not even. No, 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 no. You're misunderstanding. So so level 10 is where you got the elemental forms. That's gone completely. Now you have the teleporty ability at level 10. Mm. I, 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 that is like fucking why? <laughs> I don't understand why Moonlight Moon Druid can teleport. Like I get like, oh, the moon, the light of the moon. Like, but what? why is that teleporting? It feels like they didn't know what to do, so they just gave them advantage because they needed... Like, teleporting and getting advantage is just a good general ability, but it doesn't feel very thematically fitting. Yep. Their level 14 ability, which is what I think you were thinking of, is Lunar Form. Doesn't do what you think it yes. does. <laughs> so, Lunar Form lets your Radiant Strikes, your or not your, your Lunar Radiance Attacks, deal 2d10, still more than the Ranger, um, and when you use your moonlight step ability, you can teleport one other creature along with you. It is not a sicko mode. I know the name. You probably did the same thing. The word form makes you think it's a sicko mode. It's not. It's just an, an hurts me. it's an improvement to your previous stuff. So, yeah. They, they I and here's the thing. I don't dislike lunar form as an ability it just feels like so here's the thing it's better than their old ability which was thousand forms which is just you can cast alter self at will which is not a very good spell and not that useful when most of the time you're in animal form anyway so it's better than alter forms but still feels really weird and out of place so that's what I mean where Moon Druid is half yay and half what uh because the circle forms and the new spells and the like improved circle form stuff cool with all that the teleporting and the radiant attacks and the, well actually I don't mind the radiant attacks but the teleporting and then the slightly better teleporting feels kind of random to be honest I assume you're in the same zone. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't know. It like again, it's not bad. It's just thematically not very exciting and not on brand. I feel like because it's it's about transforming 
and teleporting has nothing to do with that <laughs> at all. Like, I don't you know, know what it would be, though, like, unironically, if it was the, the shepherd druid, I could see a teleport ability because I said this before and I stand by this. Summoning is just teleporting something to you. <laughs> I, I mean, sure. Yeah. If if shepherd druid was in this book, I could see that. Worth pointing, you know, shepherd druid's not in here, but yeah, I could see that. No, but if it was, I, it would make sense there. I, I also feel like. I don't know, like, I feel like their level 10 ability, if you're going to take away the elemental thing, should be like you can combine. Like, how cool would it be if you're like. You're 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 uh, you're a bear, right? You turn into like a bear. And then you are like, OK, in this bear form, I'm now going to add eagle wings to my bear form and then fly as a bear. You know, <laughs> like you could like combine animal powers or some shit because you're such a like crazy transforming beast, you know? I unironically I would really like wild chip if that was a thing right you just turn into fucking reptile that'd be yeah, so dope you just like combine weird shit that's what I'm saying like or not oh uh, no not reptile uh, but wanna beast sure I just finished watching Batman the Bay of the World I fucking love Bawana beast sure. his whole thing is he can take two animals and fuse them together yeah that's so, what like, I mean a horse and a spider that's horrifying. Like I got a nightmare monster. Yeah, no, that's a horrifying thought. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's an eight-legged horse that can jump super high and shit out webs. It's, it's kind of horrifying, yeah. But yeah, like, give me something more transforming related, not teleportation. So, I don't know. I mean, I still like Circle of the Moon. I'll still play it. There's, that's not... It's not so bad that I'm going to dissuade from playing it, but it is weird. And I do miss the elemental forms. I do. It... I mean, it has dissuaded me from playing it because there's no elementals in it. I mean, yes, but you that's were... not true. The fact that I can be a bird early, maybe, maybe. I mean, you kind of only gave a shit about the elemental forms anyway, and you already didn't like Druid very much. So, yeah, you might not like New it Circle be that way. You might like New Circle of the Land, though. I, I might, because the fact that you can go Warden and then go Circle Land that like yeah. you're just becoming the most nature spellcaster to ever nature spellcaster so yeah that's fair basically yeah so circle of the land now uh they're one of their other one of the other primary subclasses from the player's handbook this is the druid that you go with if you want to be just a nature wizard as opposed to the shape changey guy uh you used to pick a type of land and you were committed to that so whatever you picked when you picked up the subclass that was it now you can change your land type every long rest. So you can go from arid to polid to temperate to tropical every time you long rest. So that's pretty fun. Adds a lot of cool like versatility stuff and you can swap out spells with it because your different land types give you different spells. Uh, you also get I'm, a fun- I'm not going to lie. Wait, yes. did you? I made this joke while I was watching the video. Circle the land. Your, your different zones. I'm just like, oh, so you mean circle of fucking Colorado? Uh, yeah, I mean- <laughs> kinda yes a <laughs> little bit there's no temperate tro- arctic tropical <laughs> yeah it sounds I, like fucking Colorado <laughs> I don't know if there I wouldn't say there's a tropical land in Colorado but arid polar and temperate yeah I mean I'll give you that one <laughs> um then you get a new uh, I, don't, I don't I think this is technically a rework of an old ability but either way you get lands aid uh, which is this circle of the lands main subclass option to utilize wild shape so again they're doing the thing you asked for, Isaiah. Lots of different options to use wild shape for other than just turning into an animal. Uh, nice. Lands aid lets you basically do a bunch of AOE damage and heal somebody. It's a big AOE necrotic damage thingy and heal somebody nearby. So you just explode with nature magic. Thematically, it's like, you know, you can heal with nature, but also the na- natural world decays, you know, that kind of they still have natural recovery, which is mostly like the wizard's arcane recovery, but the additional effect is they can cast one free spell. They can, sorry, you get one cast that doesn't burn a spell slot of one of your land spells every long rest or whatever. So a little bit extra casty stuff. Uh, then you get the nature's ward ability, which gives you a damage resistance based on your current land choice. So whichever type of land you are right now, you get a damage resistance base on that and you get immunity to the poison condition. Which sometimes useful. 
Yeah, right. Again, we're, we're waiting for the monster manual, but my my stance has not changed. I'm poisoned until we see. Well, it. this is this is you as a player getting poisoned, which it is more common. Yeah, I guess it is. I guess about it. It literally is. Uh, then we got their level 14 ability is Nature Sanctuary. So their old level 14 ability, which was it had the same name, but was not at all the same ability. Uh, when a beast or a plant creature attacks you, that creature can, must make a wisdom save against your druid spell save DC. On a failed save, the creature must choose a different target or the attack automatically misses. On a successful save, the creature is immune to the effect for 24 hours. This is not very good because it's only on beast or plant and they have to make the save. And if they do make the save, you can't do it again. So also the creature is aware of this effect before it makes its attack against you. So they could just not attack you, which is stupid. Uh, it's aware of it. Then what the f- what's the point? Yeah, I know. So their new ability is much better. Uh, you you burn a use of your wild shape to cause a bunch of spectral trees to appear uh, in a in a cube around you within 120 feet of your or no sorry in a cube on an sorry spectral trees to appear in a cube that you could see within 120 feet of yourself that lasts for a minute. Um, it gives you and your allies half cover while you're in that area, as well as resistance to whatever your nature's word is currently bestowing upon you. And as a bonus action, you can move it. So you basically just make a big magical zone of half cover that gives damage resistance. Uh, so way better subclass capstone than whatever the fuck they were working with before. Because <laughs> the old one was pretty shit. Hmm. So Land Druid's cool now. I was not crazy about Land Druid. Uh, I will say a couple of these additions make me kind of go like, maybe, maybe. Yeah, I mean, no. some of it is pretty dope. Yeah. Save, save for that, uh, that, the one where it's like they know about it. No, no, it's just no, sanctuary. No, 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 no. The knowing about it was the old ability. Oh, it's the old ability. That, that's I really gone. wish there had been an article on this. Because yes. Well, I'm explaining to you. You're not listening. I, I'm sorry. There, the old ability was if a beast or a plant attacks them, the beast has to make a save. Otherwise, they can't attack the druid. But the creature is aware of this effect before it makes the attack against you. That was the old right, ability. right, right, right. The new ability is magical tree cover and damage resistance. Yes. Okay. 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 Which is exponentially better. They got it. They got a big new AOE and healing ability. They got a slight buff to their natural recovery thing. And their nature's ward ability gives them damage resistance and poison immunity. Whereas before at level 10, they got. You can't be charmed or frightened by elementals or fey. And you're immune to poison. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, that's shite. Oh, and at level six, they could move through. No- they got land stride. Moving through non magical difficult terrain costs you no extra movement. You can also move through non magical plants without being slow, but they got that stupid ability, Ranger Head. Yeah. So, yeah, Circle of the Land is exponentially better now, basically in every way. Because <laughs> it was not great before. Uh, so, t- t- much like Isaiah was like, oh, I might, <laughs> might play Sorcerer now. I look at Circle of the Land Druid and I'm like, oh, I might actually consider this subclass now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, probably not because I'll just pick Moon again, but I'll consider it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and now we have the new subclass, Circle of the Sea. I just want to preface this very slightly by saying I don't dislike this subclass, but I just think it's really funny the way it works. Because, I don't know, it just feels a little, it's a one trick pony. Let's put it that way. So, I, I, uh, kind of, it's, it was designed to not be a one trick pony. And I do like that you get some cool, like, lightning storm spells. Well, uh, so I actually, so this could be cool. Again, I haven't read it, but I had some ideas for how this could be sick. Matt was like, no, this is stupid. Why, who wants this? And I was like, kind of me, actually. Circle of the sea? Yeah. What, which part? 
Well, so Matt was like, who wants any of it? No one ever cares about swimming or like being in the water. Well, well, uh, which my response was, but it has a chance to be cool. I mean, here, my response would be clearly Matt didn't pay a lot of attention because it has almost nothing to do with swimming. <laughs> so mm-hmm. clearly Matt was paying attention. Uh, so, yeah, at level three, it gets Circle of Sea spells, which is, you know, the usual you get extra spells that don't count to gas your prepared spells that, did you know, the hoot nanny. Um, yeah. And they get thematically, you know, they get fog cloud and wind and ray of frost and lightning bolt, yada, yada, yada. But do they get call lightning? Uh, no, surprisingly. Wait, doesn't Druid already what get the fuck? No, wait, Druid gets that base, don't they? No, I know, but I want it for free. <laughs> They're not going to give you a spell for free you already have. The point of this spell, these spells is they give you spells you don't already oh. have. Wait, but th- there's no point in having Lightning Bolt if you have Call Lightning. Which is just the cooler version of the same spell. Ar- arguable. arguable. Like I- nah, sir, I'm sorry. Dropping a bolt of lightning on someone's head is, is a little bit cooler than shooting out a little pew-pew. I mean, it's not a little like, I, I, a, I appreciate. I know it's more like a Kamehameha. Raise, yeah, like what? <laughs> yeah, kind of. But like, I don't know. Just looking at someone in a bolt of lightning, like you're literally divine smiting I, I someone in the original saying, sense of a divine smite, not the paladin whack divine smite. You do understand that the, the main difference is, is uh, you know, concentration spell versus single shot big damage spell, right? Like, yes, but also but lightning. You can actually does more damage. <laughs> It, it does, but you can keep hitting people, and the damage that Call Lightning does is not insignificant. No, it's not, but I'm just saying, there is a reason for it to exist. It's not, like, totally pointless. But think about it. When you hit later on and you get the Control Weather spell, you can turn it into a into a thunderstorm, which makes Call Lightning even stronger. <laughs> well, assuming that's assuming it's unchanged, yeah. I, mean, I would hope so. We'll see. <laughs> um, the more important thing, though, is that Circle of the Sea gets their Wrath of the Sea ability. And uh, this is what I meant when I said that this subclass is a one-trick pony. Everything about this subclass is based on this one ability. And I'm not exaggerating. Oh. Yeah. So you burn a wild shape to activate your sicko mode, where a, a, like, oceanic storm emanates five feet out from you. Uh... And essentially, it's kind of like a spirit guardians where you can move around and deal cold damage to people, but only one target in the radius. So it doesn't hit everybody. You have to move and then target the person. Brother. Then at level six, the size of the emanation increases to 10 feet. And also you gain a swim speed equal to your walking speed. I feel like the swim speed thing should have been at level three, but whatever. Uh, Correct. <laughs> Then, at level 10, you get another upgrade to Wrath of the Sea. When you have it active, you gain a fly speed resistance to and resistance to cold, lightning, and thunder damage. Then, at level 14, your, em- your Wrath of the Sea gets upgraded again. Where you can oh, now... Wow, it really, it really it, is it, just... It's a one-trick pony. Uh, you can now place the Wrath of the Sea emanation around an ally, around yourself, or around yourself and an ally. Hmm. It's a one-trick pony. It's all based on that one ability. Yeah. So, what I was thinking you could do with with Circle of the Sea that would be really cool is if you could, like, spawn massive bodies of water Right, sure, like you could sure. just you just make like a big bubble of water that you could trap the Death Knight in because it doesn't have a swim speed. It won't really be able to move out of it. All its attacks are at disadvantage, and it could it could act as if it was like restrained or something. And then you can turn into a shark and just fuck the Death Knight up inside the water. I thought that'd be really cool. Yeah, I I, I would like that better than Storm Guy. It's really not Circle of the Sea. It's it's Circle of the Storm. Mm. Is really what it is and again i don't necessarily dislike this idea it just feels a little like weirdly off brand yeah it's not what i was expecting it's storm druid i like it's, that it's circle of the storm it's yeah, cool i it's like storm that a lot, druid. it's 100 yeah. storm druid it feels weird it also fears that all it feels weird that every ability they have is based around this one thing 
Yeah. That feels a little strange. It's essentially that, you know, it's a sicko bow druid, which Circle of the Stars is also kind of like that. But Circle of the Stars has like more options for their sicko mode. <laughs> you know? As opposed yeah. to this, which is just like, it just does this stuff. So I don't know. It, it, it feels. Stars Druid feels cooler because you have like the different constellations to choose from and stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, C is weird. It's a weird one. Um, and then uh, speaking of Circle of the Stars, basically totally unchanged. So the only thing that really Circle of the Stars benefits from is that base Druid has changed. So those base Druid things will kind of affect how you play Circle of the Stars. For example, your Elemental Fury feature, which gives you some like, you know, a little bit of like customizing options will sort of affect how you play the Circle of the Stars Druid. But the subclass itself, I think, is completely unchanged, actually. I don't even think it's basic. I think it is completely unchanged. Beyond maybe some like Quite word. funny, actually. <laughs> beyond probably some like slight word changes to work with the new language in the new book. But yeah, other than that, unchanged. So, yeah. But Stars Druid was a cool subclass. I mean, if you like the idea of this, like, weird, ethereal kind of space druid, I, it definitely does the job. So, yeah. That's it for Druid. Again, I would say I'm, like, 90% happy with Druid. Uh, a little less than 90 for me. I, I have more desire to play it than I did, but... I already liked it, so I guess, you know, maybe I'm the wrong person to ask, but there was very few things I was dishappy with. And I and the, the main thing that most people are annoyed with is the wild shape changes, but I understand why those are there, so I'm not that bothered by it. it sort of felt like, you know, a, uh, a necessary, basically. On to Sorcerer. Which I think basically just buffs and better stuff across the board. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, I, d I don't, I don't. Oh, with the exception of Twin Spell. Oh, yeah. Ripped my boy Twin Spell. Ripped Twin All my Spell. my homies love Twin Spell. Yeah, not so much anymore. Not so much anymore. Uh, Sorcerer. So they're, they're new... Their new level one ability, I mean, obviously they're, they get spell casting. I, I think they get uh, a couple more spells than they did before. Um, and is that even true? Am I speaking the truth? No, I don't know if that is. Wait, the D&D BR article says it is, but I'm not, all right, whatever. It doesn't matter. They get spells. It's a sorcerer. They get spells. Surprise, surprise. Um, <laughs> more spells. It's the same amount. What the fuck? Uh. Anyway, but your new ability you get is innate sorcery, which is, as Jeremy Crawford put it, uh, the sorcerer's rage type ability. Uh, which I also known as they get a sicko mode, baby. They, they do. They get a level one sicko mode that increases their spell save DC by one and gives advantage on attack rolls of sorcerer spells you cast, which is pretty fucking sick that you're just permanently like fire bolting with advantage. Big fan of that one. Big fan. Yes. Wild ability. It actually. So th th this is actually fulfilling the flavor of sorcerers. Yes. More powerful than wizards in a straight up like sheer force a bit like yes. way but are way less um way less options yes Th yeah they're like more the specific. fact that you are going to be hitting more yep. than the wizard and the wizard does like well now i'm useless it's like well he's gonna be hitting more but i have a uh, more spells yes it, it it helps distinctify the sorcerer i think they still could have done a little bit more but yes it definitely helps a lot um, level two, they get their font of magic ability and meta magic <laughs> because hilariously, for some goddamn reason, before you used to get font of magic and then meta magic at a different level, so you got sorcery points and then nothing to spend them on. 
couldn't. Well, no, that's not true. You can you could con- so you could still turn them. You could you convert, convert them. them. Yeah, that's it. That's the only thing you could do. Um. So yeah, I whatever. Um, the meta magic options. So careful spell protects your allies from taking half damage on a successful save, which I think is slightly different from what it did before. What did careful spell do before? Cast a spell that you can protect uh, full force to do so. Spend one prey of those creatures. Oh, yes. Uh, and choose a number of creatures. Uh, those creatures automatically succeed on the saving throw. Now they automatically take half damage? Or the or, or wait, what? No, that is the same. Wait, what? Brain? Hello? Chosen creature automatically sees on a saving throw against the spell. Why is the article telling me that's different? Oh, oh, they added and it takes no damage if it would normally take half damage on a successful save. So they added mm. the evasion bit to careful spell. That's what it was. Extended spell, you now also have advantage on saving throws used to maintain concentration on spells affected by this meta magic. Uh, That is definitely new. Uh, Then we got heightened spell costs two sorcery points instead of three. Uh, Heightened spell is the one that gives you advantage, so it's pretty sick. Or no, technically it gives your opponent disadvantage on their save. Uh, uh, now also affects all subsequent saves a target makes against the heightened spell. Oh, so it's not just the initial cast; it's every save. So if you cast like slow on them, they make the save a disadvantage too. That's cool. Uh, seeking spell now casts one says one sorcery point instead of two. Uh, and you can use this meta magic option in combination with other spells, which I think you could do that before. Actually, I don't think. Uh, and you must use the seeking spell for. Yes, that was already a thing. Subtle spell now allows you to ignore material components as well, as long as the material components do not have a cost specification. Fucking finally! Let's go, baby. Let's go. Love that. You could just. You could just throw that bitch out. I fucking love that. I still stand by that sorcerer shouldn't need foci, but it's fine. I could just play an MCDM talent instead. <laughs> I, I, all right, unrelated, but I, yes. I've been thinking about it. I think if Barker dies in Vecna, I'm going to bring Luca back. Interesting plan. Uh, you want me to kill Barker before you like stab him in the back? <laughs> no, no, please. No, I really don't want 12 chronic 12. What is it? Eight chronic long swords to the chest. I don't want that. Okay, okay. But Barker's an idiot, so if it happens, got it, got it, got I'm it. Just preparing myself. Got it. Um. So yeah, I love that a lot for sorcerer. Big fan. Twin spell. This is the one everybody's mad about. Oof. I'm also kind of mad about it. I'm gonna be honest. I, I get it, but I'm not. I understand it, but I don't like it. So. Twin spell now applies to spells that can be upcast to target additional creatures, such as banishment or like hold person, increasing the spell's effective level by one. It only costs one sorcery point now. Uh, So, for example, if you are level seven and you can't yet cast banishment at the fifth level slot necessary to target another creature, but you can cast it at fourth level, you can spend a sorcery spell sorcery point to twin it. So basically, you can only twin spell abilities that already could multiple could like multi target. That's what it comes down to. Yes, this kind of sucks. <laughs> yes, a lot. The big it, it, one, it a lot of sucks. The big one everyone is sad about is you cannot twin spell haste. Yep, that's one of the big ones. Arguably the big, the biggest one. So yeah. Uh, moving on. Well, I'm sad that you can't fucking big iron on his hip dual wield disintegrate. True, true. Well, could you do that before? I don't think you could swing spells disintegrate before anyway. Yeah, because it 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 would it targeted someone. Um, uh, let's see. What did the old twin spell say? When you cast a target, 
You cast a spell that targets only one creature and doesn't have a range of self. You can uh, sorcery points equal uh, with the same spell. Able will target more than one creature. Ah, yeah, I guess you could disintegrate, huh? That's interesting. Yeah, you can't You're even... Just there with, Ma- you know with the big iron on your hip. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's crazy? You can't even use it on, like, cantrips anymore, like Ray of Frost or, like, Firebolt. No, yeah, it's stupid. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty harsh nerf. Like, I understand why they nerfed it, because they didn't want you, like, twin spell haste, but it feels like a really harsh nerf. Like, a little, yeah. like, overboard. Um, But, yeah, that's what we're looking at. So, then, at level uh, Cinco. I had to think about that one. Um, you get Sorcerer's Restoration, which is you regain sorcery points on a short rest. That's your usual thing. Uh, level 7, they have their new ability Sorcery Incarnate. Uh, you can regain a use of innate sorcery by spending two sorcery points. In addition, innate sorcery now allows you to use two meta magic options on every spell or each spell, whatever. So you can, you know, for example, the example they give on d d Beyond, if you have your innate sorcery up, you can cast twin spell and heighten spell on hold monster to give disadvantage on two targets against hold monster, which is cool. Don't get me wrong. I do like that. I'm a fan of that one. Yes, he is. Um, and then they. <laughs> it's funny because it jumps from level seven to level twenty. Yeah. <laughs> because. Let's say nineteen, but yeah, yeah, level twenty. Because the other level ups you get as a sorcerer are either spells, or subclass feature or meta magic. Um, level twenty, you get arcane apotheosis. I mean, it's better, I guess. So their old subclass cap, their or sorry, their old sorcerer capstone, which sucks, was you regain four expended sorcery points whenever you finish a short rest. It's fucking lame. Their, I was going to say, getting one free meta magic a turn is pretty cool. Yeah. So their new their new ability is well, you have your innate sorcery feature act. So while you're raging. You can use one meta magic option on each of your turns without spending sorcery points. That is cool because it does mean that every turn you could throw out. You have no reason not to throw out a meta magic option. Yes. But remember when they had limited wish? They did have a limited wish, which was cool. Limited wish was really fucking cool. And I understand that they maybe felt like it was a little overboard, but it was so sick. So... I, I'm willing to yeah. forgive it because this fe- this in reinforces uh, sorcerer's main shtick. That's true. It does. It does. I still feels weird that you have to pick meta magics. Yeah, mm. I mean, we've talked about this before. You should just get all of them. Yeah, yeah, it feels weird. You don't just get all of them. I never understood the choice there, but yeah. We also agree though that like it's the same thing with battle master maneuvers. You should just have all of them. <laughs> I'm a little more in debate. They don't, they don't I, do I, enough. I, I'll be like, honest. I'm, I'm not. I'm not a hundred percent on board with that with battle master maneuvers. As much, really? Yeah, I don't know why. That I can't really just. I can't really explain it. But that one, I'm a little iffier on battle master maneuvers. But meta magics, I do feel like that should be case. Although that does mean if you give them all the meta magics, then you're going to have to give sorcerers more stuff at the levels where they get meta magic options. True. Which you know is funny. Uh, but anyway, on to the subclasses, 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 subclass. Uh, so for sorcerer, we're getting aberrant mind, clockwork sorcery, draconic sorcery, and wild magic sorcery. Uh, actually, it's not called aberrant mind anymore, by the way. It's called aberrant sorcery. That's a typo in the D and D Beyond article. Fun fact. Um, aberrant sorcery not super changed uh, psionic spells can no longer be replaced with divination or enchantment spells from the sorcerer warlock wizard spell list psionic sorcery no longer affects material components that have a specified cost so I guess that's 
Those are technically two slight nerfs, but like pretty small ones. So like I, I don't even remember those being a thing in the first place. So yeah, not much to yeah. Lose there. So the psionic sorcery thing is, uh, you know, you can cast a, a psionic sorcery spell without expending a spell slot, um, by using sorcery points, and it doesn't require verbal somat or somatic, uh, verbal somatic and material components but the material components can't be material components that have like a cost associated which is you know that's pretty standard in the game um and then the swapping out for divination and enchantment spells I dead ass don't remember ever I actually played an aberrant mind sorcerer I do not remember ever thinking or using that in any way so yeah whatever <laughs> not that important uh hmm. so yeah not much to say on aberrant mind or aberrant aberrant sorcery as it is now uh it's still pretty fun i do wish you got your revelations in flesh ability sooner but you know you get at level 14 unfortunately uh I mean, that, yeah that's pretty tough that, like, it's the one where you can like sprout cilia or tentacles or like fly yeah, through yeah, the air yeah. or whatever yeah you become a weird cthulhu boss here you do no. yes and i wish you got that sooner but you know well uh, clockwork sorcery again not super changed um, clockwork spells can no longer be replaced with abjuration or transmutation spells from sorcerer warlock or wizard spell list and restore balance is now tied to your charisma modifier instead of your proficiency bonus so clockwork sorcery and aberrant sorcery pretty much the same nothing to write home about both are Everybody likes both of those subclasses. They're both cool. Draconic sorcery, however. Let's fucking go, baby. Dude, unironically, draconic sorcery is so fucking sick now. I want to play one so fucking bad. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So much better. So you gain 10 additional spells as you level up, including command, fear, charm, monster, and legend lore. Legend lore feels weird, but sure. Uh, your Draconic Resilience new AC calculation includes your Charisma modifier. Let's fucking go. That's sick. And your new Capstone ability, Dracon uh, Dragon Companion, allows you to cast the Summon Dragon spell once per day without using spell slots, material components, or concentration. Let's fucking go. Love that. Um, so you could cast haste on your fucking dragon. <laughs> yes. Uh, as a bonus set. Oh, also with the, this spell is even better now because it doesn't utilize a spell slot. So you can cast your Draconic Companion and then do another spell. Like another leveled spell. Oh, I didn't even thought about that. That is Also, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're a fucking sorcerer. So you could summon your Dragon Companion with your action. Right? Hold on. Let me make sure I'm reading this right. Cast it once without a spell slot and gain the ability. Okay. Uh, whenever you start casting a spell, you can modify it so it doesn't require concentration. If you don't do, if you do so, the spell's duration becomes a minute, right? Okay. So, yeah. So you can cast your Draconic Companion with your action, and then you can haste, uh, not, what's it called? Uh, fuck, what's the, what's the make it a bonus action one? <laughs> oh, quicken spell. spell. Quicken spell. You can quicken spell fireball <laughs> in the same turn. That's pretty sexy, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Um, you still get your draconic wings. Uh, they last for an hour and they let you fly. All good. Um, they are still spectral wing thingies. You don't get like wing wings, which I don't know. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> uh, and the elemental affinity is the same. So, yeah. Big, big, big bump up around draconic sorcerer definitely like went from eh, not that great to yay now we're talking now we now we cook it with well, cook it with souls correct me if i'm wrong they so they used to have a breath weapon right oh geez did they have a breath weapon ability it's check i thought they did either way they still do because you have one of the spells you have access spell, to yeah. is the breath weapon spell yes so no big problem you just have it and now you have all of the elements rather than potentially just the one that you would get for whatever color you are which is cool um, let me see. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, did you lose out on the hit point bonus, though? Oh, no, you didn't. Never mind. Never mind. Um, oh, you actually get more hit points now. Not a ton. More, oh, fuck yeah. A little bit more. 
Uh, you can speak. Uh, you get Draconic Ancestry, Draconic Resilience, Elemental Affinity. No, they didn't have a breath weapon before. Oh, that's what they did. No. Uh, no, at level 18, they had the, like, uh, Dragon's Frighten ability. But now they have the Summon Dragon Homie. Mm. Which I like Summon Dragon Homie more. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 summoning. You've already... I'm <laughs> yeah. in. And then Wild Magic Sorcery. So... Your Wild Magic Surges now trigger on a 20 instead of a 1, and the Wild Magic Surge table has been reorganized, but its effects are all familiar. The Wild Magic Surge table itself has undergone quite the makeover, organizing similar effects into their own mini rollable tables. Um, yeah, there's like smaller tables within some of the tables, uh, which is fun, but also like maybe a lot to keep track of. But sure. Um, yeah, it should be all right. Uh, and yes, casting a spell after using your Tides of Chaos ability now automatically triggers a wild magic surge. Ben Luck costs one sorcery point instead of two, and the new capstone feature, Tame Surges, allows you to trigger a wild magic surge effect of your choice once per day. Uh, yeah, I mean, choosing, choosing the surge of your choice is pretty wild. No pun intended there. Yeah, so what, wait, wait, wait. Not entirely. There are some that you can't pick. Mr. Crawford did specify that. The highest tier ones you still have to roll, but Ah. it still gives you quite a few that you can pick whenever you want. Uh, After you manage so you can create effect of your choice, is there really on the table? Any effect on the table except for the final row? Yeah. Ah. Got it, got it, got it. I mean, like, it's not as potentially insane as it could be, but it's still quite solid. It's enough to make me, me, of all people be like, maybe wild magic? Wait, does the final row just mean the 97 to 100 dunk? I think so. Do not know. I think that's what it means, because I'm looking at the totally legitimate table I have, uh, and I think that just means the last 97 to 100, because the 97 to 100 effect has a mini table within it, so I think it's just saying you can't use that mini table at the very end there, because it's strong. Mm. Uh, once you use this feature, you can't do so again until you finish a long rest for the tame surge, which want, want, but fine. Um, so yeah, wild magic. I mean, I didn't dislike wild magic as much as you do, but I definitely like it a lot more now. Now it feels, it feels like you can actually utilize your clash's main shtick more, which is fun. I like that. It, it also has some quite, like, cool thematic stuff that it just lacked back in the day. Like, Old Wild Magic was boring as fuck. Yeah, I mean, Old Wild Magic felt very... Yeah, I don't know. It felt like they didn't know what, what they wanted it to actually play like. Because it's yeah. got, like, oh, you have advantage against a check. And you're like, oh, okay. And then it's like, oh, well, your surge is... Uh, there's like one ability to do with your surges. You're like, all right, well, yeah, this is so always prop. You have so. a modicum control. Whenever you roll on the surge table, you can roll twice and use either. Yeah, I'll set level four. Yeah, and that's uh, assuming that you could roll in the first place. It's uh, still entirely up to your GM. They still have controlled chaos, but now they also have the tame surge at level eight. And well, yes, yeah, but again, controlled chaos is better now because you're in control of when to proc. Yes, you have much more. Yes, you have way more control over when your yeah, your surges actually go off. Uh, to do because it's been a reroll d4. Yeah, so how did the old Ben Luck work again? Um, you have the ability. Okay, when another creature you can see makes an attack roll or ability check or saving throw, you can use your reaction to spend two sorcery points to a d4. Uh, and apply the number rolled as a bonus or penalty. Do so. So wait, what it was the spell? It was the just 
Yeah, okay. I guess the only difference with Ben Luck. Ben Luck's the same. It was just the one sorcery point. And then, yeah, Tides of Chaos. Give yourself advantage. Once you do so, you must cast a sorcerer's spell with a spell slot. Or finish a long rest before you can use the feature again. If you cast a sorcery spell with a spell slot before you finish a long rest, you automatically roll on the wild search. Yeah, that's kind of the big change. Uh, once, uh, once per turn, you know, just... Yeah, so Wild Magic Surge is once per turn, you can roll a d20 immediately after you cast a spell, and if you get a 20, you're on the mat, you go up, you set off your Magic Surge table, and then Tides of Chaos is the thing where you give yourself advantage, and if you cast a spell after Tides of Chaos, you automatically roll on the Surge table. So yeah, the main thing is you can... You have more control over actually using the surge table and then at level 18 you can actually pick those are like those those are the two big things that make it feel much more interesting i will say the one thing that i did kind of like with wild magic because i kind of get what they were going for here is that the old wild magic level 18 ability was spell bombardment uh, when you roll damage for a spell and roll the highest number possible on any dice, choose one of those dice, roll it again, and add that roll to the damage. You can use this feature once per turn. I kind of like... It. This is a bad execution of it, I think, but I do kind of like what they were thinking with Spell Bombardment, where the idea is that the wild magic sorcerer, because you're, you're just, like, brimming with magical power, that you can do extra damage, like, you could... Your fireball goes off even harder... I think it just needed it the way it worked where it's like if you roll the highest number possible that feels shitty <laughs> it's like roll your damage for a spell uh or yeah when you roll damage for a spell and roll the highest number possible on any of the dice choose one die and roll it again it's like okay that's not that much more i would like a little something more so i don't hate that idea but the tamed chaos thing you have so many potential things you can do with Tame Chaos since you can just pick off the Wild Magic Surge, so I think that's probably a cooler idea anyway. I It does kind of make... I do want... I don't know. Maybe balance-wise, this just wouldn't work, but I would love a Sorcerer subclass that is just the fuck you, I blow shit up so Sorcerer, you know? <laughs> like, like, I don't know bombardment sorcery or something like that where it's just like your thing is just you make spells do hot dick ball and damage you know yeah like you you like shit maybe what it should be is you can make your spells do a dick load of damage and hit really hard but like you hurt yourself or something because it's so much like uncontrolled power I want dark phoenix as a sorcerer is what I'm saying <laughs> Mm. Right, like, I'd be down for that. That that sounds fun as fuck. Yeah, that's the you're kind just, of thing. You, you basically just be evocation, but better. And then yeah. the evocation board is like, why? He does what I do. He does the fucking. You said we're all picked for our UD skills. He does what I do. It's like, yes. yeah, except he takes like eight d six damage every time he casts fireball at ninth level as a level yeah, yeah. five wizard. Yeah, like ah, that's fair. Yeah, something like that. I think. But anyway, yeah, wild magic surge or wild magic sorcerer and draconic sorcerer. Much improved. Big fan. And base sorcerer. There's still a couple of things I would have liked a little more for base sorcerer, but I still like it nonetheless. I also kind of wish innate sorcery upgraded a little bit, but maybe that would be too strong. I don't know. Because it's a plus one to your I mean, DC, and I would like that plus one bonus to go up a little, maybe. Or maybe you get an additional effect, like some sort of additional bonus. I don't know. I mean, I, yeah, I, I can respect wanting it to go up as you level up, for sure. Because it's like, oh, that's cool, and then it just never gets beyond that. Yeah. And, you know, like Barbarian Rage, right? Like, your damage goes up a little, like, something along those lines. Yeah. But I guess they were like, that would be, that would get a little too crazy, a little too strong. I don't know. Maybe have it, maybe at later levels have it, because it only applies to save DC, maybe have it apply to attack rolls at a little bit later levels too. You know, something like that. I mean, just a little extra sauce, wizard. A little more sauce, just to spread out the sorcerer from wizard just a little bit. They did, they also took away, um, what was that? Was it, was it Chaos Bolt? I think, right? 
Um, yeah. No. They got their own spell in one of the playtests. I'm pretty sure it was called Chaos Bolt. That was like their own mm. special. Yeah, 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 yeah. I do remember this now. Yeah, right? it was a cantrip. Yeah. A little sad we lost out on that. I think that wasn't the only one, too. I think they got a couple. I think Sorcerer got a couple of, like, their own spells. Which I feel like missed opportunity, maybe, a little bit on that one. Not have those. They might add them back in later, in, like, later books. They might. They might, but I don't know. I, I, I want them now. I mean, I guess I could... I guess you could always just look at the playtest and add them back in yourself. I suppose that's not particularly hard. True. But, yeah. Yeah, so, uh... That's all the fucking classes. We're done. You done diddly did it. We're finally done. See see y'all in five or ten years again when they uh, redesign the books again. Yeah, or when the next time they drop subclasses. Or that. Um, I, I meant when they redesigned the player's handbook again. Oh, yeah, I mean, when we get actual 6th edition? No, no, we get 5.75. I'll scream, I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> then we call it 5RR. Revised, 5E, revised, revised. I will fucking kill somebody. That would be funny. I mean, awful, but also funny. Um... Any closing out thoughts you want to... Uh, oh, they also had Arcane Interruption. That was the other cool thing they had before. Or Arcane Eruption, sorry. It was like a centered on them AoE explosion thing. Oh, and Sorceress Blast. Yeah, yeah. That was the cantrip. Sorceress Blast. Yeah, what the fuck? Anyway, sorry. I was looking through the, I was looking through right. the old UA trying to find it. Closing thoughts. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're through every class. Do you have... Okay, what, what are your top five classes you want to play? I talked about mine. Of the new... Top five. Of, of the Of the new... Oh, man. Oh, man. Now that we're done. Top five. Uh, um... I, 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 I know everyone's going to be like, yeah, no shit, Josh, but I want to say Bard. And also probably Claire. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um. Yeah. Uh. Monk actually. Monk is one of the ones that jumped up way high in the rankings for me. Way high in the rank. Like Monk, I think has a ton of potential now. Especially, uh, I, I actually really like the idea of a four elements monk now, which was like basically an unheard of statement in the D and D world prior. <laughs> um. <laughs> I think most it, let's okay most improved where uh, let's go it this way rather than like top five I want to play most improved to the point where I'm like yeah now we're cooking I would say monk warlock barbarian I think are the ones that I look at and go I was iffy I mean I liked warlock before but there were bits of warlock I didn't like now I look at monk warlock and barbarian and I'm like yes that's some saucy shit. I mean, I did give a lot of credit to Fighter too, though, actually. So, yeah. I'll go with those four. I I know you said five. I don't know that I have a fifth, necessarily. Hard to say. But yeah. I mean, I, I feel you there, because, like... I mean, for my top five, Rogue, Barbarian... So, for uh, well like so like rogue for me is like yeah it's fun but it didn't like it rogue was already fun <laughs> you know like it didn't it didn't jump up that much because it was already sick yeah well so let's put i want to try thief finally oh thief yeah that's true that's fair so yeah i would say actually you know what you could uh sorry real quick but because of the way assassinate works now, you actually could do like an EI jutsu samurai character by doing Kensei monk and um, assassin rogue. Good, yes. Because you get so many buffs to your fucking initiative that you're going to hit first no matter what, and then you're going to get all your extra damage off. True. And all you need is advantage, which you could get through a million ways now. True, true. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean... Uh, the only class that really dropped in love for me... <laughs> it really was Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> like I uh, I know it's the meme but man it just uh God damn it dude It's 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 like kind of like what, guys what is it what is the meme stop like what you expect this to be a joke like yeah like at some point they at some point they're going to say the book, <laughs> they're going to say April Fools at some point right yeah, Ugh. like if we didn't already have the book, I would still a part of me would be like, no, like when the book comes out, this will be better. It'll this, be this different. Has to be a meme. <laughs> nope. And it, no, it isn't because we have the book. Yep. We have the Necronomicon. And well, also it's not people better. Been, people have been posting about it online and shit like YouTubers like, yeah, it's not. It's it's just like, I mean, here's the thing. I still love the idea of Rangers. I could still play a Ranger. I could still make it work, but it's just it just feels so much more generic and flavorless now to the point that I'm like it, it feels like if you if you're gonna play like if you're playing the new ranger a lot of your work to make your character feel like a ranger is gonna be on you as the player to make that flavor work because mechanically it feels so flavorless yeah you know it's it's just fucking captain's hunter's mark captain hunter's mark with a little bit more spell casting it just there is no sauce. It is boiled chicken. They forgot the salt and pepper. Like, I just... You know? I don't know. It's rough. And again, I think mechanically it probably is stronger, but again, it's so much more generic that I'm like, who cares? Yeah, it's just painfully boring now. Yeah. I don't know. I don't I don't even know. I don't, I, like, I don't even know what... It's like, what do you even do at this point? I don't know. But whatever, I guess. <laughs> uh, I just think it's I, I just I really do think it's really funny that they were like. This class. All about this one spell and only this one spell, and it's like, but. But no other class is dictated by one spell. Why would you do this? <laughs> And, like, you could maybe make the argument of Paladin, but, like, even Paladin wasn't that heavily dictated by one thing, you know what I mean? Yeah, and, and again, I, I think the thing that kills me is it's the only class where if you can't cast a spell... You're fucked. You just lose most of your class. <laughs> you if you get hit so with silence, shit. you're fucked. Yeah. Well, no, I think it's only... Isn't Hunter's Mark somatic only or whatever? So you're good there uh maybe maybe let me check actually just out of curiosity mark there's mark oh no it's only verbal yeah oh my god <laughs> yeah so yeah if you're in a silence bubble you just lose five you know four to five of your abilities yep and then you're just a fighter with nothing you're a fighter with some movement speed and expertise and tireless. And I guess nature's veil. It's appearing. Yep. <laughs> Trash. <laughs> and the worst caps. I. I'll def. I'll, I'll master of combat. I. <laughs> God damn it, dude. I will stop being funny I, at some point, but I don't know when. <laughs> Not anytime soon, apparently. I will sort of kind of defend some of the other ranger decision stuff. I cannot defend that capstone. It's fucking trash on a level I cannot even describe, dude. Yeah, it's absurdly bad. It's so bad. It's crazy. I I can't believe. Why are we still on this? I can't believe we're still talking about ranger. Like, ah! <laughs> it's such it's a genuinely mean... disbelief. You're like, because you're like, no. No, this can't be it. <laughs> there has to be more. You almost refuse to believe. You're like, no, I do. <laughs> this is dumb. No, <laughs> it's like, oh, God. And now I just I just I just have an image in my head of monk, monk and ranger sitting in a room. That's just like the sad reject corner. And the Jeremy Crawford just appears, opens the door, holds his hand out to the monk caresses him slightly and brings him through the door and just shuts it and Ranger's just sitting there looking at the door like wait but I, what about 
Oh, oh no, he locked the door. Okay. You know, yeah. Like, like Monk just casually looks through the window at Ranger, like, ooh, that, yeah, that's 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 rough, but um, I'm gonna go uh, go do something else and uh, actually be played now. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! Like they fixed it. I th- I think that's really what makes it funny. Is like they took Monk and fixed basically every complaint that I t- every ba- every major complaint that I saw people say about Monk. They basically fixed. And Ranger, they fixed none of them. Literally none of them. Yep. They didn't even fix. You know what else is wild? They didn't even fix the most basic fix that everyone requested, which is just don't make Hunter's Mark concentration. <laughs> They literally, so yeah, that's the crazy. Uh, they didn't fix anything. They did. They just no. removed a bunch of shit. They just removed stuff and like. Yeah, yeah, can you can you fix the like favorite enemy in like favorite no, train? No, we're just gonna get rid of it. Gone. <laughs> it's just gone. Take it out. We don't need it. You have hunter's mark to represent your favorite foe. It's like, but that's not a favorite foe. I just I just decide a particular guy in the battlefield's a dickhead once per fight. You're like, yep. Oh, oh okay. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. Okay. That wasn't supposed to turn into a rage rant, but it did. It did, yeah. It did. Um, but yeah, I mean... I'm basically cool with every other class, and I mean, I'm one of the people who's not that bothered by the Divine Smite nerfs, but... So, you know, take that with what you will. But yeah, I'm basically cool with every other class, but Rager. That's where I'm at. Yep. And you know, I, I'm 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 very interested to see to see what that monster manual, that new monster manual brings us, because you know, monsters are the mm-hmm. entire other half of the game. And I just hope I just hope we get some new interesting stuff with monsters. I hope we get some more you know. I don't know, just not not bags of hit points with a basic attack, you know, like as so many monsters end up being. Mm -hmm. I think we will, because I think a lot of the a lot of the um, more recent monsters, I think, do have some interesting stuff. So I think we will get something, but yeah, we'll see. I probably shouldn't get my hopes up too much. I don't want to be hilariously disappointed. Uh, that's why I, I I was like, I'm just going to let him rock. Cause yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I won't get my hopes up too much, but yeah. Anything else? Anything else you want to add? You want to stoke the fire with anything else? Uh, no, no. I'm just going to say uh, tune in next week where I talk about the coolest part about Lancer to me. <laughs> okay. That's it. Is that a, is that a um, sneak preview? Yeah, we're talking about sit reps, baby. I don't know what that means, but okay. You gonna find out, ain't you? I, I am gonna find out. It's true. It's true. Uh, yeah. If you liked the ranting and raving that you have heard, you can follow us on the Twitter to stay up to date in case we tell you that our house has exploded and we will not be recording for a little while or some such other information like that. I'm not saying they're going to. I just, you know. You know what I mean? If they did, theoretically, if for they, some reason. If they hypothetically some did. Some undisclosed reason. If the CAA decided I was a problem. <laughs> you know. Stuff like that. Normal things. Normal things. And uh, if, uh, if you're listening to this and uh, you're like, oh, I didn't hear the other uh, class revision stuff. Um. I mean, we have a playlist, 2024 class revisions. Go check out that playlist. Bye-bye now.